my channel. So I'm here on the island of Nisaros, just off the coast of Greece. And this is a volcanic island. And I mean, I picked one of the most beautiful days to be here. And I'm here to help finalize the UNESCO Global Geopark application. So hopefully, Nisaros will soon become one of the amazing geoparks on the UNESCO list. But I'm here in Nikia, so you can see to my right here, it's such a beautiful town, so picturesque and just, I mean, on a day like this, you can understand why it's just really, really stunning. And then just round from Nikia, we can see the Stephanos crater. Now, the age of this crater is unknown, but this was formed by hydrothermal activity many, many years ago, and it's actually one of the largest in the world. So it's really spectacular to see, especially on a day like this, like the weather is truly, like it's just perfect. And we're in November and it's this perfect, it's amazing. But the crater behind me, it's 27 meters deep and it's 250 meters wide by 360, something like that. I'll write on the screen, it's hard to remember all the little facts. But it was formed by steam and gas uplifting through volcanic activity. So it also, I think it, um, when it was active, it would have been releasing temperatures around 96 to 100 degrees Celsius. So hot stuff but yeah that's just a little introduction I'll now show you around a little bit but I really hope you guys enjoy so I thought I would just mention a little bit about the UNESCO application. So it's literally days away from being finalized. And one of the last steps is putting together these, you know, public engagement type things. So this is one of the examples of the posters that can be used to engage the public, but also it's very useful for students or just any interested parties to kind of understand the geology that you're actually looking at at these geosites, because it really is an amazing island with a lot going on. And it's complex geology to understand. So I'm joined here with a student, uh, a master's student from Athens actually who helped put this together to actually make it understandable because these are scientific topics so to actually put it into words that are understood by everyone is quite a tricky task and then I'm also joined here with Professor Nomiku who's going to explain a little bit now about this geology to you guys and tr uh, try and reflect the poster to the amazing view. We are studying in the type of lava named as rhyolite mm -hmm. so just uh, behind me it's a famous village of Nikia, so the whole area is composed by rhyolite. Just in front of us, it's the Lucky Plain. It's the place that you can find all the craters. So, as you can see, Nisiros is an open geological laboratory, and this is the main reason that we need to have Nisiros in the Global Geopark of UNESCO. So, for us, it's a case study that we can see all the hydrothermal craters, and also here you can see the Age of the craters that have been erupted. For example, the last eruption was created, this crater, Micros Polyvotis, just in front of us at 1887. Wow. Just behind the craters, these are the Rioda sites that cut the caldera formation, and the last eruption, the big eruption, was before 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. So enjoy the view and please make a pray that <laughs> Nisiros will be one of the next. Geopark of UNESCO. Definitely, I'm hopeful. <laughs>Today I climbed to the highest point on Nisaros, which is 700 meters, and we can see behind me the Stephanos crater, which we saw earlier in the video. But I thought I would talk a little bit about the rocks I'm stood on now. So there's Greek mythology behind these. So this is Polyvotis, which was a Greek giant in uh, Greek mythology. And Poseidon, there's a whole story to go with it. So Poseidon broke off a piece of cos and threw it at Polyvotis, and Polyvotis then died, and that's what Nisaros actually is. So we stood on a great big giant and the reason it's a volcano is because Polyvotis was so angry that Poseidon had the audacity to throw rock at him that he died with a lot of anger in him and that's why it's volcanic. So uh, that's the story behind Nisaros volcano that we're here and why it's active. Um, but I just thought I would show you another view of the amazing craters of the Lackey Plain here. So now I'm going to go into the craters and these are still active so hydrothermal activity is still going on so there's something called a fumarole which releases steam and gas and we'll be able to see a few of them later on and these can get up to about 96 to 100 degrees so you don't want to get too close because they do get hot but you can enjoy the warmth coming off them so we're going to now head to a crater and see what's inside.
So I'm now inside the craters and to my left here we can see Stephanos. So you saw it from the bird's eye view and now you are literally inside it. So the size of this crater is humongous. So it's 27 meters deep, as I said, and then about 260 meters by 350. So it's really large scale and you might be able to see the kind of greeny yellowish color. Now that is sulfur. So if you're here in person, you'll smell kind of like a foul egg type of smell. If you've ever smelt sulfur before, you'll know what I'm talking about. And this is the gas from the fumaroles. So the fumaroles here can get to about 96 to 100 degrees Celsius. And in the center of the crater here, there's actually an area that it is too hot to go near. So for safety reasons, certain places we're not going to explore, but um, we should be able to see some of the activity in this crater. So this is hydrothermal activity. So there, it is active. So we'll be seeing some fumaroles in a second of uh, some gases and um, steam and stuff coming out from this volcano. And then to my right, we have the younger Stephanos crater. So this is the smaller one. And we can see that there's quite a lot of vegetation in this one. And that's because uh, you might know that volcanic activity, it makes very fertile ground. So plants love it. So you can see here that it's quite a, it's much, much smaller than uh, the larger Stephanos, but um, it's got lots of vegetation. So we're now going to head in really into um, the larger crater and see some fumaroles. So you can literally feel the heat coming from the ground here. So that is coming from the fumaroles and it just tells you that this is an active volcano still. So we're gonna check out the fumaroles now. So we're gonna follow the edge around here. So we're looking for that kind of where the sulfur is very concentrated and that's where it's being released as steam and gases. So we can see some over here. And amazingly, we're here in November and there is no one else. We have the whole crater to ourselves. So we can see some of the fumaroles here. So these ones aren't smoking, but you can see the amazing sulfur formation. And it kind of looks like thorns and spikes. And then the one over here is smoking. I'm not sure if uh, my camera will be able to pick it up for you guys. But if we take a look, you can, might just be able to see the heat and gas coming out of this one. So here we have another very active one. So you might be able to see, well, you'll definitely be able to see just how much sulfur is at the base here. So it almost looks like yellow snow. So if you have a look, it kind of has that furry appearance and this is letting off a lot of steam. You might be able to see it over here. Just like that. So it's hard to capture just how much steam and gas is coming off of these fumaroles, but there is a lot. Maybe if I, zoom in for you guys here look at that it's just spectacular to see it really is and i'd be curious to know how hot these are you know to actually put a thermometer inside them so maybe that's something for the future but how amazing is that to see behind me you can see this is roped off for a reason so this is the hottest part in the crater so this is too hot for us to go near and you can see there's a lot more steam coming off of these fumaroles than the smaller ones we saw earlier so the temperatures here are you know around the 100 degrees mark so very very hot and uh, talking about the Greek mythology I mentioned earlier, this is the anger of Polyvoltis, that giant I told you that Poseidon killed with a piece of cos. So if you remember, he threw it at Polyvoltis, killing um, the giant, and the giant was so angry, that's why there's a volcano here, because it's all that anger inside of uh, Polyvoltis, and why it's still active today. So you could say this is the e epicenter of Polyvoltis, and still to this day, he's bubbling away with anger. And if we're really, really quiet now, you might be able to hear the bubbling. We can hear it here, but I'm not sure if my camera will pick it up. So let's just be quiet for a second and see.
So I'm back at the Stefanos crater today. So it is 24 hours since you saw it last and is it, it's so much more active than it was yesterday. So you can see behind me all the hot steam and gases that are coming off. So there's a lot more active fumaroles than there was before. And we also have boiling water coming up to the surface. So it's amazing how, how much more activity there is in such a short space of time. But that is uh, volcanoes for you. They can be very uncertain. So you do have to be careful because these are very, very hot. So it's amazing to see and I'm extremely extremely excited to be here but it is also quite dangerous but um, I just thought I would share because it is such a magnificent sight like there are so many active fumaroles and you can see just how much steam is coming off of these it is really amazing I mean, Here we go. Okay, here we go. Are we just going? Okay, there is a drone above me, but that's fine. Okay. So I'm now in another crater. So behind me is Polyvotis. So this is another one of the 10 craters here in the Lackey Plain. Now this one is a little bit smaller than Stefanos, but still a very amazing size. So you can see it here. It is just spectacular to see, but there's not a lot of hot steam and gas coming out of the fumaroles here. So you can see the yellowy tinge to the rock. So there is sulfur and it is still active, but far less compared to Stefanos. But then if we come round to my right, we've got the little um, Polyvotis crater. Now this one is the younger one and this was formed in 1887 in an eruption. And we can see the fumaroles here are extremely active. So there's a lot of hot steam and gases coming out of these. So it's spectacular to see, but you don't want to go inside there really. So it's a much smaller crater, but there's a lot of activity going on inside this one. So it's really cool to see. So you can see here all the steam going up the sides of the crater. So it may be small, but there is a lot going on. <laughs> so that's today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll link any important links down below about the UNESCO application, but also my social media if you'd like to follow me on there. Hopefully there'll be a lot more coming from Nisaros in the future as I am obsessed with this landscape. It is an amazing place. So when the website goes live for the Geopark, I'll pop that in the description box so you guys can check out the Geo sites and also a bit more about the cultural her heritage here. So I really hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next week. And I can confirm that the steam here is also too hot to touch. So it might not be 96 degrees Celsius, but it's still hot. So it doesn't burn you, but it's not comfortable. And me being me, I decided to, you know, try and touch it and learnt my lesson. So this is hot steaming gas coming out of these fumaroles. So it's amazing to see, but not touch. <laughs>